I'll tell you what I'm doing with my bra, but today there's been mixed reactions to Cabinet's fresh regulations that's aimed at controlling the spate of gas explosions and fire outbreaks at fuel stations across the country. There are some positive reactions to the plan, but many are also still not satisfied. We'll take you to a gas filling station here in Accra and speak to consumers as well as those who, have, who live close to the facility, facility. We'll also have details of government's plans and policies to curb such disasters, but there are some who are not changing their approach to get a fuel station they believe is wrongly cited. Removed, student of the University of Professional Studies located close to the uh, to the atomic junction station that experienced that explosion. They are those people. Well, they have been demonstrating today. I'll bring you Maxwell like the best report on that. But just as uh, we know, government has shut down 21 petrol and uh, uh, gas stations since that cabinet um, regula regulations came out yesterday or last night I should say we've also visited a gas station that's sited in a community and is surrounded by a cemetery residential facilities as well a school and some business centers find out their views on the government's new regulations in this report by John uses Derek Ekosam I'm at a gas station here at the Audome Estate. I want to describe to you what I'm seeing here. Just beside this gas station, there's a washing bay where people come to wash their cars. Directly opposite the station are places of residence where people live and then do business to make some money to earn a living. Now, I want to pick the thoughts of these people on the decision by government to close down all gas stations that are in residential areas. It is two-way because you want to close them down, fine. But should they be closed down? If, you, if there's a need to close them down, then it should. But if there's no need and it's just to make sure you satisfy people, then I don't think it's right. But if they are not satisfying conditions that they should satisfy, then if you are closing them down, it's necessary. But if not, and, but sometimes I share the view, it is even in our homes, we use gas in our homes. Don't they kill us in our homes? Yes, so don't we don't we use gas or are we not going to use gas in our homes? You you have a business close to a gas station. Yes. Are you not scared? I am very scared. I actually pray every day. I don't sleep. I pray. When I sit here, I pray. Hey, when am I going? So it's a worry to me. Not coming on here. But once we want to stop home. It's a good decision, but I would be glad if the government considers those who end living from these stations. Government should rather ask the owners to relocate further away from the residential areas. The workers there need to survive. They have families to take care of and they need to survive. For customers who throng the gas stations to refill their empty cylinders, the decision by government to have these gas stations operate retail outlets where customers will receive already filled cylinders has been met with mixed reactions as well. It's like that good for us because the way you go come, then you stay for life. It's not good for us. And uh, sometimes the way the gas filling stations, sometimes you will see that some... Sometimes I see some before like a some accidents, something like this. Uh, it's not good for us. If it's something like a dog or fill the thing already, if you need the thing, then you pay the money, then you carry, then you leave the empty cylinder. It's good for us. Uh, it's better. It's better idea. Not that center, mm -hmm. because a place like this, there's no resident over here. So why don't you maintain the same situation over there? If there's any problem, they should come and see it and solve it than telling us to, f to bring our cylinders to some place and go and buy it over there. I don't think this will be the solution for us. They should find a fine solution for it. What about the workers who are working here? Now the government is saying there is no job. And you are saying they shouldn't do it yet. So the, the staff will go down and some will, they will upload them, some of them to go home. Yeah, that would be ideal. But my problem with this thing is that um, but sometimes when you take your old, uh, your new cylinder to the, the, the depot, the one you exchange with will be an old one leaking. And if that happens, what do we do? Besides that, in this country where we always have shortages of gas, when there's a shortage, some of us who don't know anybody might not even get gas for a long time. So if it happens like that, what do we do?
but you think it's a laudable idea? It is. It is. If there is abundant supply of gas, where well, we just go, like we buy tomatoes in the market, you just go, you put your cylinder down, and then you, 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 you pick a new cylinder, which is, you know, sometimes they will shortchange you. You bring 14 cylinder gas and you go home with a 10, uh, a 10 kg or whatever measurement it is. You get it. So if there's a means that uh, we'll get the, the correct measurement and the cylinders are in good order, perfect. And the gas is also in abundant supply. I don't have a problem with that. It remains to be seen how these concerns raised by the residents and customers will shape the policy. For Joy News, Derek Akos Sam. All right, so obviously, like we said, there are mixed reactions there, but it appears that people do agree that it's a good thing. So what exactly are the regulations which were announced by Cabinet after their meeting yesterday? Here they are, and I'm going to go through them for you. Um, so yesterday, the information minister put out this information, and uh, what it says basically is that President Kufado, on the advice of Cabinet, directed that the cylinder regulation model of liquefied petroleum gas LPG distribution be implemented. Now, if you remember, this was a uh, this was this was a policy that the government attempted to. Uh, introduce, but was met with some some level of resistance, and so uh, now President Kufado has sort of decreed, so it's going to uh, be implemented. Now, it says that this model means that the LPG bottling plant will be sited away from congested commercial and population centers, and then they will, be, they will procure, brand, maintain, and fill empty cylinders, which will then be distributed to consu consumers and house households through retail outlets. So this was something, as I indicated, was... Um, going to be introduced at some point it met a lot of resistance and so it was withdrawn now it appears that it's the president has spoken and it's going to happen now immediate inspection of all gas stations and the vigorous enforcement of the existing regulations by the national petroleum authority is one of the key things that they're seeking to do with this new regulatory uh, instrument so review of the current licensing regime to ensure that only those with demonstrable capacity and competence engage in the LPG distribution business. And that's one of the issues that the, the, some, well, some of those that we spoke to have raised. They want to be sure that they're not being shortchanged, for example. They want to be sure that when you go and give them your cylinder, that you're not getting something that's substandard to what you have presented, that you're not getting a faulty cylinder, for example. So those are some of the concerns that were raised. Now, deployment of a task force. So this is one of the things that's going to happen. Uh, we're told within 30 days that it's going to be the deployment of a tax force to assess the risk that our current LPG infrastructure poses in terms of public health and safety. One would have thought that this would have been done a long time ago, that this would have been something that is done periodically or on a periodic basis. But, well, better late than never, they say, isn't it? Now, high-risk stations will be immediately closed down in accordance with re relevant law and without regard to any political or special interest. And you ought to know that. That's a very interesting point. This week, when I spoke to uh, former Environment Minister Mahama Yaruga, it was one of the main points that he raised. And that point is that there is a lot of undue, what he calls undue political pressure that is brought to bear on people who are supposed to be regulators. And so you have a lot of fuel stations or gas stations cited at wrong places. And so, it boils down some way, somehow, to political influence there. And that's one of the issues that the new regulatory uh, instrument from the presidency is looking to tackle. So I'm going to go over that again. High-risk stations will be immediately closed down in accordance with relevance law and without regard to any political or special interest. It remains to be seen, by the way, how government is going to achieve that because you do know the role that politics play. So we'll see how that goes. But just so you know, like I announced earlier, we understand that about 21 petrol and gas stations have been closed down. We'll bring you details of that particular story. But it's obviously in line with what the new regulatory uh, instrument that came from the presidency yesterday says. Now, low-risk stations will be designated for the supply of gas for vehicles with improved safety standards. 
I'm not really sure I understand what that means, but low risk stations will obviously mean that they have they pose less threats to human life um, than the uh, the high risk stations, which of course they will be closing down. Having spoken about uh, closing down high risk stations, we also heard yesterday that some MMDCEs have started shutting down some fuel stations uh, outside Accra. And we had the OMCs yesterday organize a press conference. They mainly against that one as well. They believe that there has to be some sort of lay down procedure if you want to close down these because they think that it is it's going to lead to some kind of undue uh, victimization of some of the companies. We'll see how that pans out as well. But let me wrap up with the, the, the directive that has come from the presidency from the cabinet meeting now. It says the recruitment by the NPA of 200 safety auditors to join the staff of the Factories Inspectorate Department of the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations to check regularly on all stations to ensure full compliance with safety standards and practice. And like I said in the earlier to one of the points, one would have thought that this is something that's quite basic. This is something that we should be doing as a country if we indeed took safety uh, seriously and that it didn't have to take seven people dying and hundreds more being injured for us to get here. But like I said, better late than never. Here we are, we're looking at the NPA recruiting over 200 more people to join in the departmental checks every, every now and then, the regular checks that they do at the uh, fuel stations to ensure the safety standards are being adhered to. Hopefully that works as well. Expedition of action by the fire service and the police service of ongoing investigations. Well, we don't know so much of what happened with the uh, June 3. Uh, we understand that there was a spark of cigarette and that caused it. So much didn't really come out as far as what went into that investigation, what the investigation, what the outcome really was going to lead us to achieve, by the way. So we're hoping that there will be the expedition of that action as they're saying here, by the fire service and, of course, by the police service of ongoing investigations. And we'll get to know how it goes, including what happened in Atomic Junction as well. Any operator or regulatory official against whom any act of criminal negligence is established will face the full rigors of the law. That's quite basic as well, in my opinion, because anybody who flouts any rule of the country or to pay for it. It's simple as that, isn't it? Immediate cessation until further notice of all construction of facilities intended for use or uh, as gas or petroleum retail stations. And that's also been a point of discussion so far. And um, people have been asking, what's, what's going to happen to those who have gone through the process? So there's a lay down procedure in this country where people ought to go through if they want to establish a fuel or a gas station people have done that they have paid for it so why do you then withdraw at the very last minute so we're looking also at the possibility of legal cases being brought against the government etc we really don't know how far that is going to go but of course that is one of the regulate regulations or one of the regulatory instruments from the cabinet meeting held yesterday immediate cessation so if you have any pending um, uh, pending request, pending licenses, you do know what your fate is at the moment. You're going to have to wait a little longer. That's if it's going to happen, uh, come through for you at all. So these are the, uh, the government's new regulations for fuel stations. And I've been able to go through um, one after the other for you. Uh, very soon I'll be having a conversation about this with Nanaya Wakwada, who is the executive director of the Bureau of Public Safety. I don't know if I have him on the line already. Nanaya, do I have you? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Fantastic. So let me first of all take your impression about the policies generally. Some have said that most of them are quite basic. For example, if you flout the law, you certainly have to pay for it. I mean, we don't need a presidential decree to remind state institutions to work. But let's just say it's become necessary. What do you think of the policy, the new policies generally? Well, I think um, we need to commend the government. Um, without going into the content, I am very happy that finally we have cabinet for the first time uh, sitting to consider and issues of public safety. That is very comforting. Okay. When it comes to uh, the, the content, uh, we have um, agreed 
on some fronts and um, expect more on other fronts. For instance, we have said that the three provisions, sorry, that came with clear uh, timelines were very desirable. For instance, immediately mm. there should be seizure in all construction. Right. As this Immediately in the next 30 days, the, there's going to be set up a tax force that is going, if you like, tax um, audit papers finished. That is within the next 12 calendars. Uh, well, I'm, I'm having a bit of a challenge with your sound. Let's see if you can wrap up what you just said uh, for me once again. There was, a, it, there was a bit of a break here, here and there. If you could wrap up. So my, my understanding of what you've just said is that you are severe, that that's very concerned about safety in this country. You're very happy. The news, the information that has come from par, um, cabinet is very comforting to you. And uh, not just a safety aspect, but, but as Ghanaians. And the fact that there are timelines to each, not each of them, by the way, but that there are timelines to main actions that ought to be taken. That's very good for you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we were, the other side, the low side is that we were expecting that as part of the cabinet's directive, they were also going to cause to be published this particular accident report and past accident reports so that as a public, we could draw lessons from those accident reports. And then secondly, we're also expecting that cabinet was going to make a decision and if you like, add timelines to the general national operational safety policy, which has been waiting for over, uh, which has been in the cooler for over, over 10 years. Right. So if, if you'll be a bit specific on this uh, policy that has been in the cooler, according to, your work, uh, to you, well, help me the, out here. The national, the national Occupational Safety and Health right. Policy and the bill, you see, what government has come up with is something that pertains only to the hydrocarbon industry, if you like, the retail okay. side of the hydrocarbon industry. There is a general national Occupational Safety Policy that takes care of the manufacturing industry. It takes care of the services sector. It takes care of the great sector. It takes care of the construction sector. That is the policy that we're expecting that looking at the commitment that the government is demonstrating towards um, occupational and public safety, we're expecting that if it has got into the level of cabinet, they were going to make some pronouncement on this uh, particular national policy and the accompanying bill which okay. we worked on it many many years ago and every now and then we've been working on it it's going through uh, this is the third administration that is going through already and we think that is about time that we watch to pass this policy and ensure that other workplaces other than the finish stations are also safe because day in day out uh, there are accidents and incidents and all forms of diseases arising out of various workplaces but because the numbers are scattered and they don't get to be reported like we are getting the media to report these seven deaths, government is focusing on it. We think there is an looming um, national disaster that is there and is in disguise. Mm. And we think cabinets uh, look at that one too. Okay. In your own, I mean, if you had your way, would you give, would you have any timelines for government to look at this? Because it appears, of course, that this is like an emergency on our hands. So government is looking to deal with it. Should they then, you know, use this as, a, as an opportunity to go back on this? And as a burial, do you have any timelines within which maybe that ought to be done? Well, we think that it's appropriate that you strike when the iron is hot. And so at this time that the government has rolled out um, this cabinet policy, it will be important to be useful to just be in the scheme of things to say, hey, you know what, we are giving ourselves 12 calendar months to roll out this um, uh, CRM uh, LPG policy. Why don't we add the national policy and the accompanying bill together so that by the next Full cycle when we are going a full cycle 
to the 12 calendar months, we will not only have a cylinder recirculation model um, of a liquefied petroleum gas policy in operation, we shall actually have a national policy on occupational safety and health and its accompanying bill okay. being implemented and we will end up securing our workplaces and protect life. What do you say to the OMCs, for example, and other business uh, uh, owners who have said that this, for example, today 21 stations we understand have been closed down? Yes, we're talking about safety, but um, what, what do you say to those who think that this is going to unduly affect businesses in this country, affect employment, which is something that we're dealing with and grappling with as a country there, as well? There, there, is no doubt, there is no doubt that businesses will suffer. In every time there is change, there are some people who will suffer out of the change. But it is important that they unify their front and engage government in manners that will ensure that the impact that it will have on their investments will be minimized. Okay. At best, we are looking at government buying some out and go, going into joint ventures with others and for others whose paperwork and documentations are close to zero, I think those ones, we will just have to dismiss them. But for those who have obtained licenses to operate, licenses to, um, you know, um, set up these stations, I think that government must meet them some way. All changes in, in times like this will cost money, and I do not think that ours will be different. Thank you very much, Nanaya Akwada. And uh, if you were excited, I'm assuming that many more Ghanaians are excited about the timeline that's given to the cabinet uh, regulations that have just come in. Nanaya Akwada is Executive Secretary of the Bureau of Public Safety, and uh, they are happy about what government has done. Very soon, I'll bring you more information about uh, which stations um, have been shut down, etc. But then there's also a government statement that has come in following this one. Um, let's see if we could go through that quickly for you. And it says the date is dated the 13th of October 2017. And it says that we will strictly enforce government's new LPG regulatory measures. President Kufuado assures. Now, the President of the Republic, Nanado Dankwa Kufuado, has reinforced his and the commitment of government towards the full enforcement of the new regulatory measures for the operations of the liquefied petroleum gas industry issued after the cabinet meeting of Thursday, the 12th of October 2017, at a meeting at the Ministerial Coordinating Committee set up. But of the ministerial committee set up by the president on Friday, the 13th of October 2017, President Akufado noted that the committee is to ensure the strict adherence and implementation of the regulatory measures and depart from the area, era of non compliance, uh, which has been the status quo in recent years. The ministerial coordinating committee, chaired by the Minister for Energy, Wache Jako, comprises also the Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation the Minister for Local Government and Rural Development, the Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, and two Deputy Ministers for Energy. The Ministerial Committee is to be supported, uh, is to be supported by, a, and this is the second type who I'm actually seeing in that, um, in, in that uh, press release. I, I thought I'll, do, I'll gloss over the first one, but the second one I think I ought to mention. So I'm assuming you want to write, uh, the Ministerial Committee is to be supported by a technical implementation committee chaired by the chief executive officer of the National Petroleum Authority, NPA, Hassan Tampoli. The other members of the committee are the chief fire officer of the National Fire Service, the CEO of Standards Authority, the CEO of the Environmental Protection Agency, the director of the Land Use and Spatial Development Authority, and the director of the Department of the Factories Inspectorate. Reiterating his comment to ensure the full implementation of the measures, President Kufado assured that his government does not intend to follow the practice in recent years where the political will to enforce measures protective of the citizenry has not been present. And there's a quotation, perhaps we can skip that quotation since we have seen quite a lot of that information already. And see can get to the bits of the end. Let's start from the committee. Now, it says that the committee members have assured, assured the president of their determination to enforce fully the measures rolled out by government to forestall the occurrence of any more gas explosions and to coordinate effectively their actions. 
Um, that's far noted. We, he thanked the 21. Okay, so that's still a lot of information from that meeting. That's far noted. He, uh, that's far noted. That far, he noted that 21 high risk stations have been closed down. Okay, there you have it. In accordance with relevant law and without regard to any political or special interest. The National Fire Service assured the President that a full report of the atomic junction gas explosion will be ready in two weeks. And this is, of course, a matter that I was referring to earlier on about what happened to the previous report from the June 3 disaster. And we also, we also look forward to getting this particular information so we know how it goes. And it will be interesting for us to have the details of those 21 stations that have been shut down so we can monitor and be sure that there have not been any political, so to speak, influence and that the, the fact that they have been closed doesn't mean that they're going to start working some way, somehow, on the blind side of everyone else. Still talking about explosions and accident and what has happened now. Sleepless night, fear and uncertainty. Those are the words that best describe the aftermath of Saturday's gas explosion at Atomic Junction on Caroline Asiedu Ochre, a resident of Firestone. Now, when the explosion started, she was home with her two children and parent. With her son at her back and a limping aged mother, she narrates to Joy News' Faustina Safo how they narrowly escaped death. We're all in the living room with the kids. I mean, they, my son, my daughter, my son is seven years old, my daughter nine years old. I mean, they were having fun. They were just up to their usual antiques. And um, we were listening to the news. And I had a phone call. So in the midst of the noise, I decided to go and sit in the bedroom and listen to the call. And... You know, it was a normal phone call. I was happily chatting and laughing. Then suddenly, I thought I could hear noise, commotion. It, initially, I thought it was from the other side of the caller. So I almost asked what was going on. Then I realized the sound was closer to me. In my mind, I thought, oh, it's another accident again, because we are used to having cars knocking people down on a particular stretch. I remember i got up and looked out of the window casually really expecting to see somebody had been knocked down so i initially i looked on the streets to see who had been knocked down then i i noticed that people were running from the atomic street from my bedroom window i can see a bit of baritas so i saw people running from there then i i, I heard somebody shouting so immediately I panicked. Then I realized that people were also running under my building on my side. So I quickly shouted out, what is happening? What is going on? Somebody shouted, gas leakage. That is when it dawned on me that there was a, a strong smell of gas in the atmosphere. I mean, I, I don't know how I flew out of the bedroom, but I managed to flew out, fly out of the bedroom and shouted to my mom, to everybody, come on, let's go, let's run out, let's go. How we went out of the house, I don't know. But we, enter, we, we, we came out of the gates and a few people were there, including my dad. We, we shouted out as well, so he was also there. But then it didn't really look like much of a fire. So my first instinct was to call the fire service. This is when I was talking to him, we heard a loud bang. We just ran towards the direction of um, Zongo Junction. Then at some point, I, I realized my mom was nowhere near me. I, I turned around and my son almost falling off my back. So I kind of grabbed hold of him, realized my mom was on the floor and I haven't forgotten what I saw until today. I mean, she was just being trampled upon. I, I clearly remember seeing a foot in her face. Somehow she, she got up, we just kept on running, and then the, the second blast just came. And I, I remember when I was picking her up, you could see the fireball. We could feel the heat. I mean, it was like, I don't know, we could just feel the heat. So I don't know how we got up. We kept on running. I had to hold on to her. We kept on running. I remember my son was shaking so much that my body was literally shaking as well. It's not something that one can easily forget, especially, you know, seeing that your children need your help and you can't do anything to help them. And some way, somehow, we managed to get back home. 
and it was crazy. I mean, the whole place was dark. I remember the ASN building next to my building, uh, their glass had exploded. So we literally stepped on some of the broken glass before we realized that, you know, it was actually glass that we were stepping on. And my kids wouldn't leave me. They, 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 they were just holding on to me. So I said, you know, and not just them. I think it's something that we all haven't gotten over. It's certainly a very hard thing to say and to remember and to play back. And this is why these regulations may be more necessary than we think. You're still watching The Pulse with me, Gifty and Rapia.